Given a function f of x defined as such, it's a quadratic in completed square form, and it's um, the domain is x is greater or equal to k, where k is a constant. And then we're told that given that the inverse of this state the least value, the least possible value of k. So let's sketch if we were to allow all possible values of k, what would this function look like? It would have a minimum actually at three minus seventeen. You get that from completed square form because this bit here is always greater or equal to zero. The smallest it could be would be zero. And then so the smallest the function could be would be minus 17. And it's zero when x is equal to three. So it's going to sort of be down here. And um, I'm not actually too bothered about what the function looks like. So I'm just, I don't think this is correct. Actually, I think it would have a negative intercept. But it doesn't matter. Because the main reason I'm drawing this is that we can see this is not a one-to-one -one function. It must be a one-to-one -one function for it to have an inverse. And so because we're looking at a domain greater or equal to k, we've got to get rid of all these bits where it's uh, you know, it is many to one, essentially. And therefore, it's going to start here at the minimum point. And therefore, the least possible value k is going to be k equals 3, because remember, that was our... 3 minus 17, that was our minimum. All right, next up, evaluate f of f of 5. So I'm going to work out f of 5 first of all. Let's put that in. Um, to be honest, just easiest, I think, just to put in the calculator. Got some 4 minus 17, it's actually minus 13. Now, it might be very tempting to then do f of f of 5, which is f of minus 13, and that bit is okay. But at this point, you're meant to realize that actually this is not possible because we've just said that x has to be greater or equal to k. So basically, this does not exist. This does not exist. Since we require x is greater or equal to 3. So that is actually the answer to this question. Um, yeah, minus 13 is not in the domain. Maybe I'll just write that as well. Now, I did actually check the answers and they accept it. So as a special case, if you did work out f of minus 13, which is 239. So don't be too hard on yourself. If you did get 239, you would still get the marks here because it was mainly testing you on that. But be aware of this, you know, uh, from, from now on. Okay, C, we're asked to solve the equation f of x is equal to x. So I've got my completed square form. I'll, I'll write it like that for the moment x is equal to x. Right, I'm going to expand that out. x squared minus 6x plus 9 minus 17 is equal to x. This means x squared minus 7x from a minus x on both sides. This is minus 8 is equal to 0. Factorize. So I've got x equals 8 or minus 1. Now it is expected this time that you realize to reject the minus 1. Yes it is. If you did have the whole kind of curve it would um, be a point of intersection with f of x but we have to incorporate the domain. x has to be greater or equal to 3. Reject not in domain. So we just get the one answer. Finally, explain why this solution to C is also the solution to the equation f of x is equal to the inverse. And this is something to be aware of because another time you might get a question where you're asked to solve f of x equals the inverse and you can actually do what we just did here. So here's the key thing, f of x and the inverse are actually related because they are reflections in y equals x.
essentially, if you had, um, if you say had three minus 17 for the function, then you would get minus 17, three for the inverse. And that is precisely a reflection y equals x. The two are swapping around when you do that reflection. So um, you can say that. So they will intersect. on y equals x. A few, few banana skins in this question, I think. But um, yeah, really important um, bit of knowledge used throughout on functions. Well done.